Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of how to live out of your van or a vehicle or whatever you decide to choose. We are on the second part, which is the essentials, like the things that you want to consider bringing or changing out for something a little more convenient. So if you haven't seen the previous video on how to pick out a vehicle, then maybe I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check that out. What we're going to talk about today is, yeah, what you should or should not bring. And now, depending on the vehicle that you pick, it's going to change everything because you're going to have a different amount of space that you're dealing with. So, for instance, if you chose like a little truck and you're just going to sleep in the back, or if you're going to take a minivan, sleep in the back, uh, you're not going to be able to bring as much with you and you're going to have to be a little bit more conservative with the choices that you make of everything you want to take. And if you have, let's say, you go with a camper van or a bus or an RV, really it's up to you at that point. You're <laughs> free will, you can do whatever you want. And that bitch, <laughs> my dog is staring at me. Don't look at me like that. So this video is gonna be more marketed towards the people that are gonna be living out of like a minivan or a smaller vehicle just because that's where it really gets down to uh, what you should or should not take with you as essentials. Because in my experience, I overdid it and I got like the extremes of everything because I thought that's what I needed to do. Not true. I could have gone with the minimum, saved a ton of money, I would have more time to travel and more money to travel with. So it was more logical to do what I didn't do last time. Let's talk about what you actually need. So let's pretend everything is gone. There's nothing in the back of your vehicle or whatever you choose. And you're like, well, how do we get started? What do we, what do we choose? What do we, what do we really need? I'm going to say the main thing you're going to need is a comfortable place to sleep. Cause that's the main thing of the van life is you're going to be sleeping out of your vehicle. Why? Because it saves you so much goddamn money. So you're going to need somewhere comfortable to sleep. Now you can use your old mattress if you have one. I decided to go to Walmart and pick up a memory foam mattress. It's more comfortable than my like $800 old mattress that I have that's a spring mattress. It was just comfy and I could fold it into positions that I needed. And if it was a little too big, let's say you got tire wells, you could probably actually cut the mattress if you wanted to and it was like $300. So you can go with a double and cut it out there if you want to or you can go with a single. You don't really need a whole double if it's just yourself. Even a single you could share if you wanted to. Um, you just need somewhere comfortable to lie on really. And then another thing, depending on your weather situation, I would have a sleeping bag that you could either put on top of the mattress. Like if you have a bunch of, if you leave it in the double and you just cram blankets on, you'll be all right. But if it does get colder out, I did use a sleeping bag. I had like some crappy one from like when I was a child. Uh, it wasn't that good, but it worked a lot better than blankets did because it seals you in and all your heat stays in there. So you don't really need as much to stay warm. So if it gets a little chillier out, maybe look at grabbing a sleeping bag because I ended up near the end of my trip using that a lot more because I didn't use it at the beginning at all and I got cold some nights and it wasn't that comfortable and the sleeping bag fixed that up for me pretty damn good. Uh, so the next options you're gonna have to look at is what you're gonna do for food. If you're gonna be cooking your own food, preparing it yourself, or if you're just gonna eat out all the time. It's definitely cheaper to make your own food, but with that, you have to you have to be able to cook it, clean it, so there's more time in that. So if you want to make your own food, have your own drinks and stuff, we're gonna start off with the next essential, I would say is a cooler. For me, in my trip, I got an electric cooler. Don't do that, it didn't work for me, it probably won't work for you, it wasn't necessary, because it didn't, it didn't even make it that cold with the electric and it took way too much power. I would have much preferred buying a heavy duty cooler, just a regular ice cooler for like half the price. Work even better than what I was using. And you would have more space because you don't have to worry about having the generator and whatever it is. Because that's what you want to do out of this is keep it as simple as possible when you're starting out. 
You don't want to get overwhelmed and be like, I can't do this. You just start simple. And if you feel like you want to work your way up after that, be my guest. But in the beginning, keep it as easy, as cheap, and as fast as possible. And then you won't have as much on your plate. Next is this is a stove to like cook food. I use this a lot because I just bought like cheap meals like uh, mini frozen pizzas and I just throw them on the stove, cook them up and I would have a meal in like a minute or two. It was a lot faster and easier and I enjoy pizza. <laughs> Who doesn't? So for the stove, I got like a three burner. So I had like two burners on the side then like some sort of like serrated steak burner thing which I use the most because I could just throw my food on top. I didn't need like a pan or anything. It would just sit on top there. Took up so much space having a three burner thing. It was like, it's like this big. So I didn't need that much extreme. Like if you know you're gonna do a lot of cooking, maybe go with a two burner or maybe get two separate things. But having this huge thing that I had to find a place to put every time and take out every time was very complicated. I would have rather gone with a single burner and have it compact where I could either leave it on uh, top of something or just easily move it when I needed to. So I went overboard on everything. As you're gonna see, I just like, I went extreme and I regret it. So take that into consideration if you're deciding if you're gonna go extreme or not. I would, yeah, I would have rather built off of something simple than starting extreme and being like, I could have traveled for, I don't even know how many more months, maybe like two more months if I wouldn't have done that that way. The next thing I would say is pretty essential, especially if you're, <laughs> especially, well only if you're cooking your own food really, uh, is a sink. You need a place to clean your dishes and stuff like that. Now I <laughs> built a custom frame, custom sink bowl, custom water jug, pump, sink thing. Uh, it was confusing to build and it was weird. It worked. Uh, I didn't like the manual pump though. That wasn't fun, especially when you're trying to wash your hands and you've got a pump and you're washing dishes and you've got to pump it and you're getting soap everywhere and water everywhere. I would have rather bought an, like an electric little shower thing that you can get for uh, camping and then you can just set that up and recharge the battery pack every now and then. So other options instead of doing what I did for the sink would be to just have a water jug with either a water pump on it or have one of those things where it's on its side and you can just press the button and the water just comes out through with gravity and then just have like a big bowl and then you can just wash your dishes in the bowl and throw out the water. That's an option uh, for that. Or you can go extreme and add like a little bowl with a drain and everything like I did. It drains out the van into the, onto the road. For brushing your teeth, you're gonna wanna be doing that all the time. So how, how, how do you do that? Uh, well, I use my sink. I would just brush my teeth and spit it into my sink because it just drains out. Uh, but I saw a lot of other people that were living out of like a minivan. They would just have like a bottle of water and just pour it on their toothbrush, brush their teeth, <laughs> just on the side of the road, just like beside their car at night. And uh, that seems to be fine. That works. It's not too complicated. So my next essential thing that I would say before we get into the... Uh, less essential things that are just more convenient would be blinds. Blinds in your vehicle because when you're inside a vehicle you don't want people to know you're inside the vehicle or at least I don't and I especially don't want to be seen while I'm just sitting inside my vehicle or sleeping and that would be that's just more of a comfort factor it would weird me out to be honest. <laughs> so I got blinds or blackout curtains specifically bought in like they're like long actual made for windows and stuff like that and I would cut them to the size of my windows and then I had uh, industrial velcro that I would stick onto it and then I could roll them up and then stick them to the top and then at night I could pop them out take them down so I wouldn't have blind spots while I was driving. Now it didn't work that well because the velcro would have like each piece was like a little thick so you would have little gaps all along the edge unless you covered the whole frame and velcro which would take a lot. Uh, another option would be to just use uh, garbage bags and tape and just tape them, tape out your windows if you have a lot of windows. And then like you could always leave them up and then just buy uh, blind spots for your mirrors so you can actually see because there's a lot of vehicles you know that don't have windows in the back anyways. So 
I just like having the window so I can see everything around me when I'm driving. Less of a essential, but more convenience. We're gonna talk about lights. So I, in my vehicle, I had an LED light strip that would go along the top that I could just turn on, I could see everything fine, and it would work great if I wanted to put on my blinds down and do some work at night or something like that. And so LEDs worked great if you're gonna have some sort of power system. But another option to take into fact is you could just buy touch sensitive uh, little LED lights that just run off batteries and then just stick those on your roof and then you can just like tap them on when you wanna use them and tap them off, tap them off when you don't need them. Which may be more easy to use because you don't need a remote for the LEDs. You don't need to find the remote if you lose it. <laughs> and it doesn't really use your battery power. So you just pap, 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 and they're all on. Now, uh, solar power. Solar power, a lot of people are like, solar, ah, wow. Do you want solar power? Uh, you don't need it. So that's the expensive thing. It's really expensive for solar power to set up. It's, it's cool as hell to have because you don't need to rely on anything else. Uh, you can be out in the wilderness for whatever reason and just stay out there off the grid and charge your cameras or laptop or whatever you need if you have movies or something to watch. So it's cool to have, but like I was in and out of Starbucks's and McDonald's all the time to get Wi-Fi so I could check things, check the internet, make videos, upload videos. And so when you're in there anyways, they got plugins if you need it. So you don't need it, right? You get what I'm saying? So, but if it's something that you decide that you want to have, here's the thing that you can do. You can go without it at first and just go to Starbucks's, like I said. And if you find that it's too much of a pain to go to Starbucks's all the time, uh, you can buy a different type of solar setup than what I did. I did everything myself, so I bought uh, golf cart batteries. I got two and those are $500 for both of them. So total together, 250 each. And then I bought like an inverter, a pure sign inverter, a 20 amp uh, charge controller, and then 200 watt solar panels that were each like the flexible kind. So they're very thin because I wanted them to be very stealthy so people didn't know I had a solar panel set up because that was around $1,500 for the whole setup or more. And the problem with that is the batteries, when they charge, they produce a, a gas that is very poisonous and explosive. So you need a battery box and you need it vented out. So I had to cut holes in the side of my van to vent out the gas. And so that was one of the more complicated projects I had to do was set up that in a way where it'd be both convenient placement and uh, safe. So what I would recommend instead of doing that and having this crazy setup, which mind you is probably cheaper than doing what I was going to do or doing what I did and going with, there's a company called Goal Zero, which I've seen a lot of their videos and a lot of adventure people, uh, they use their products. And one of the reasons I recommend them is because what they have is portable and convenient. So they have uh, little packs of solar panels that are very lightweight and they expand. You can have a pack of your solar panels and then when you wanna use them, you just open your window or whatever and slap them on the roof and then you can charge your stuff and then at night you can take them in so you don't have to worry about people seeing solar panels on your car. And if you decide you wanna go backpacking, you can just throw those on for like a couple, four extra pounds and you can charge everything if you go on for like an adventure and you wanna charge your camera. It's just, it's portable, convenient. And then the battery, one of the better things about the battery is it's like all in one. Everything's in this little box. You can get a small one, which is more portable to take with you, which has less power because it's so compact. Or you can buy like the large one which is still smaller than a battery setup that I had. And it doesn't produce gas, I believe. I couldn't find anything saying it did. I looked it up and I was trying to make sure 
and the way it's set up looks like it wouldn't produce gas anyways because there's no way to like vent it out on it. It's all in one box. And the thing about that is I believe the batteries are more convenient because it has its own little percentage on it and everything comes out of that thing. And you can just take it in and out and it doesn't take up as much space as having this huge battery box that I did. And you can take it out at any point and replace it with something else if you wanted to. And you can buy a package from there for like uh, 600 bucks instead of 1500 or more. And it's all good to go. You're ready to just slap it on the roof, charge. And if you're just charging like LEDs and laptops and cameras, you're golden. You don't need much power. Like mine was confusing for me because I really didn't know what the percentage was on my battery. Cause like sometimes I would turn on my lights and I would get the red lights and I've overcharged or over discharged it. But if I would turn the lights off, it would go back up to showing that it was at like 90% full. So it was like, it was confusing me and it was more complicated than it needed to be. So I had some stressful times when I thought the batteries weren't working and now it's winter. They don't really work anymore because they're so cold in my car. So for things like that, then if you decided you wanted to go somewhere else, you could just easily take them out. The most expensive part of the thing, you could just take it out and take it wherever you wanted to. It's portable. Now, a thing that you may not think about, but it's an everyday occurrence is going to the washroom and how are you going to do that? So when I started, I saw some people, they would buy like uh, a portable toilet and it was just like a, it's like a seat <laughs> that has like a net and like a bag in and then you just, if you need to go, you need to go and you can just, you can poop, <laughs> you can poop in it and then tie up the bag and throw it away. Uh, so I bought that cause I'm like, I don't know, man, I might need to poop. Uh, never, never did. I mean, <laughs> I never pooped once on that adventure, man. Two and a half months, I didn't go once. And I was always parked near a Walmart or some sort of place where if I was during the day, I could go anyways. So I didn't have an issue with going to the toilet. Uh, peeing was a different thing. I pee a lot. I drink a lot of water. And so what I had for that was I had beside my sink drain thing, I had a little funnel tube that would drain out the side of the van as well. And so I could just, you know, pee whenever. <laughs> Mainly at night when people weren't walking around and nobody would notice if I peed. But you can also have had it where I would just get out of the van, stand on the side of the van, and then just pee on like a bush or something like that. Uh, so that, that, that's a little more weird because you're like urinating outside. You gotta go, you gotta go, right? It's not like, there's nowhere to go, I can't pee now. <laughs> so. <laughs> As you can see, it's very white outside. Snow everywhere. That, that's why I didn't want to film outside. Not because of the snow. I'm a Canadian. I'm used to the snow. Uh, but when, it, when, I'm, when I'm filming a video and it takes like a half an hour to like talk and get out my ideas and it's about minus 27 degrees Celsius outside, it's a little minus 18 Fahrenheit for you uh, people in the States. <laughs> it's a little cold to be filming a video outside for a half an hour, unless I'm like all dressed up in like a hood <laughs> or not even that, like fully geared out and I could just like be like a little snowman. But yeah, I think this, I think this covers all the main essentials. So like I said, if you have uh, more space and different personal needs, you can you can have more stuff you can take with you. And then like there's the obvious things that I don't really need to talk about is like clothes and uh, dishes and stuff like that. You just pack what you have into like a little container. Yeah, so if you guys, like I said in the last video, if you have any more questions for me, I'm gonna be making a couple more uh, different videos on getting started just so I can cover as much as I can. So make sure if you have any questions or if you want to know anything from personal experience, just go ahead, leave a comment in the description. I'll either answer it down there or in another video. So I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys get started in the van life and I hope 
you really enjoy what you do because it's one hell of an adventure, I'll tell you that much. So yes, have a good one.